Ladies and gentlemen, I'm making progress with the exoskeleton. But it still needs some work. Let me tell you about it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk more about the upgrades that I've made to my exoskeleton. I'm not sure if upgrades are the correct word, but just more progress that I've made in building it. And you probably noticed these red cables. These are the electrical wires which go to buttons in the arms which send the electrical signals to the solenoids in the back. And if you saw video part one of adding solenoids, electric solenoids, to the exoskeleton arms, then you know what the solenoids are and should know what they do, but I'll explain it again later. So basically the biggest update here is that I no longer have to pull the levers. If you remember in the very first video that I posted, I was pulling hydraulic levers to get the arm to move. Now I don't have to do that. The exoskeleton moves very roughly. I have to do some fine tuning or even rough tuning uh, with some of it, but it does move when I move. So I'll show you how I got that to happen when I take the camera off the tripod and bring it closer. So as a matter of fact, let me demonstrate the movement and then I'll take the tripod off and show you up close. So I'm going to turn the power unit on so we can get some hydraulic power. Okay, now that the hydraulic fluid is flowing, I'm going to demonstrate the biceps just by pressing the buttons, or what I call the activation bars, inside of the arm. So we're going to roll the bicep up, curl it upward. Just like that, just by pressing. And I can bring it back down, like this. I can bring the arm in, and back out. The reason it's juddering like that, I'm not actually, I'm not totally sure why. I still have to figure that out. It's either something with the solenoids, they're not activating smoothly, or with the relief valves. I, I ha didn't really set them. I adjusted them a little bit, but I may have to adjust them some more. And of course, you lift the arm up, and back down. And both arms work the same way. So I'm going to put it on one more time and see if I can get it to activate more smoothly while I'm wearing it. Okay, I think I figured out why it's moving so roughly. So let me take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you. I'll give you a closer look. Okay, so here's the exoskeleton. Actually, you can see there's some oil leakage. I have to fix that. It's because the relief valves activated. I didn't expect them to. I didn't really set them high enough. So I didn't even put the tubes to lead them back to the reservoir because I didn't expect them to activate. So I'm going to have to clean that up. But anyways, if I show you one of the arms, inside, let me turn the power unit. No, I'm going to keep the power unit on because I'm going to demonstrate it. Inside, there are these bars. And when I press them with my arm, they push buttons, which are inside this housing, and send a signal to the wire back to the solenoids, which I'll show you in the back. Now if I demonstrate 
I'll press this one, which will move the bicep. Just like that. And then I can bring it back down by pressing this one in reverse. And I'll do it again. Just like that, by pressing these bars inside, which press buttons. And you can see how the wires are connected to the terminals of the buttons. Now let me turn the power unit off. Okay, I just turned the power unit off, so hopefully you could hear me better. And basically this is the main part of the update of the progress, adding these here. I admit it's not the prettiest looking, but for a prototype exoskeleton, I guess it's not bad and it certainly does the job. And you can see all the leakage. I'm going to have to clean that up. It's leaking from here you can see one of the relief valves right there there are two of them actually and then two of them on this side also I didn't add the plumbing back to the reservoir because I didn't ex expect them to activate because the pressure is not supposed to rise up very high since I'm not lifting any weights in this test but apparently the factory setting is very low for these solenoids well, anyways, you could also see that I added a lot of steel hard lines and they connect to the rubber hoses. And there are far fewer rubber hoses on this because I think the steel hard lines are a bit neater and they, they certainly take up less space. So since I showed you this in the front, let me take you to the back and show you the back of the exoskeleton. And ladies and gentlemen, here is the new back, back panel of the exoskeleton. What a mess, I know. All that wiring looks like a nasty rat's nest, bird's nest, squirrel's nest, whatever, but it works. Here's the power unit. If you remember in the early video, I had to move these levers to move the arms, but I don't have to do that anymore. I'm still using this power unit just because it has the pump and the motor and the reservoir to pump the hydraulic fluid through the system because I haven't built the one that attaches to the exoskeleton yet. But these levers are not even connected. They're just still part of the power unit because I just didn't take them off. Well, anyways, looking back up here, you see the solenoids. If you remember from the previous video, or even the image of the previous video, the thumbnail picture, these solenoids are now horizontal. They used to be vertical. And I switched it because they work better in the horizontal position. So it was a mistake of mine to put them vertical in the first place. You might also notice, before I even start talking more about the electrical, components that the most of the hydraulic hosing the rubber hose has been replaced with this steel hard line and I did that because it's more compact it doesn't take up as much space and that's basically why because it doesn't take up as much space and it goes to the front of the backpack where I also added an internal panel so I could mount some more components to it. And in this case, I, I mounted these two relief valves right here. And there are two on the other side also. And if we look down the arm, the cylinder still here, but there's also this check valve, which is not, it doesn't have its connector going back to the reservoir or going back to a drain line. Not yet, but it will soon. And these relief valves here, see this one is still plugged. I have to add the line back to the reservoir for that. And same with the other. 
And that's where the leaking is coming from, actually. It's coming from the, out, the outlet of the other relief valve. For some reason, that one's activating. I don't know why. I have to check the setting. But anyways, let me just talk a little more about the electrical. The hardest part about wiring everything was trying to find a way to make it neat and orderly. And I kind of almost succeeded at that. I mean, it, it is somewhat orderly coming from the solenoids and coming from the back and then through this homemade, whatever you call this, um, I'm not even sure what it's called, but I just drilled through some tubing, cross board it, and then put these set screws in. And then it, it goes awry right in the center where these distribution bars are and then these terminal blocks and uh, I'm gonna have to redo that because that's really it looks terrible inside back here and this piece of wood is just temporary because I knew all of this would probably be a mess so it's just to try to find a layout which will work it's I'm definitely planning to change it Inside here is a battery. It's a lithium iron phosphate. It's just a small one. It just powers the solenoids. There will be, I'm thinking there is going to be, uh, I'm not sure what size battery, but a very large battery which will power the hydraulic pump for the uh, exoskeleton when the time comes for that. And there's still space on the back panel because I have to add solenoids for the lower legs, for the lower body, when I get to that. And also for the hands and wrists when I have a chance for that. So there's plenty of things that I'm still going to have to add to the back. Now if you're wondering why there's so much coil, such, uh, such big loops of uh, cable, I should say, it's because when the arms move, they move forward and back and that pulls and pushes on the cable. So there needs to be a lot of slack. That's also why these hydraulic hoses are like that. It be, it, they're for the bicep. So when the arm moves, the bicep cylinder actually rides on a pivot. So as it moves, it pulls down and the cables drop down and then they ride back up as the cylinder retracts. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now with the exoskeleton. I hope you enjoyed the video. I also hope you always find something to look forward to, and I'll see you in the future.